right, awesome. Hey, Lab Coats, what is going on? It's Nick Baldwin here. We got a great webinar today for you, sponsored by Firepoint, and it's about two really important things. It's about first, speed to lead, how important that is in this day and age with internet leads, uh, Facebook, pay per click, the whole nine, how important it is to follow up as quickly as you possibly can, and second, accountability. You got to have goals. You got to let people make sure you're on track. And we have Jacob Stark from Firepoint. We have Damon Gettier from uh, EXP, and he is in, in Virginia, right, Damon? You're in Virginia. He's yes, been the number one. He's got the number one team in Virginia for the last seven years. They did something like 200 and I want to say 70 ish units, right, last year? Like 227 last year. 227. All right. Well, this year you'll do 270 ish, right? So. <laughs> to over 200 units last year and, and a little fun fact damon was the very first agent to ever use firepoint so he was kind of like their guinea pig which is super cool <laughs> i have firepoint as well i think it's a great system so let's dive right on into the new video about how important it is to follow up quickly and how important it is to be accountable and allow people to hold you accountable and i just noticed that I'm on my wife's account on Facebook, and so she's now live in Facebook on Lab Code Agents. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Yeah. So um, let's get down into the nitty gritty, guys. So tell us a little bit about your business. Um, tell us your structure, and tell me, you know, where most of your business comes from. Uh, so we have. Uh, I guess we have 14 agents now. We actually were onboarding 16 this week, so we've made a major push for recruitment in the last uh, 60 days. So we're onboarding 16 this week. Um, as you said, we're on Firepoint. Uh, leads would be Realtor.com, Zillow. I mean, a little bit of Zillow, very little Zillow. Uh, Realtor.com, Zillow. Pay-per-click is huge for us. And then uh, Ylopo. And Ylopo has been – incredible for us um and of course once they integrated with firepoint that marriage has just been it's been a little a little bit short of awesome it's just incredible nice yeah i i use y lobo very heavily in my business too um i i'm i'm gonna start testing out y lobo with firepoint as well uh so you're saying you have a lot of you're having a lot of success with that oh man it's insane and they i don't know if everybody has it maybe i should be quiet but the AI launched this week, the artificial intelligence for the texting and everything. Yeah, it's and, great. Man, I wish my agents could have as good a conversation as a computer can. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's been insane. It really has been insane. The engagement has been over the top. Yeah, so what, I don't want to get too much into the, into the AI of YLOPO, but um, it definitely is helping uh, to nurture – uh, to nurture your leads, you know, after they come in, maybe you weren't able to get a hold of them to begin with, but the AI is so smart. Yesterday, they, they, they found out if one of our, if one of our leads was pre-approved and they told us we were pre-approved, they were pre-approved pre pre for 450 and one of my agents instantly set the appointment. So it was huge leverage. I think that's definitely the way of the future. Um, but it definitely is helping with speed to lead. I mean, some of the, some of the crazy statistics we're hearing and things that I'm reading are the average response time on a lead through the internet is 44 hours. It's almost two days. Ooh. So when agents are saying the leads suck, I don't know. I'm starting to feel <laughs> like they don't, right? No, I, I will, I'll tell you, we ran a test last year and – we, we ran it on Zillow leads and it was just cause it was, we, we, we'd done Zillow for a couple of years and we'd stopped. And so we ran it on Zillow leads last year and we called Zillow leads. When I say heavily, I mean, we probably made 35 or 40,000 phone calls to just Zillow leads. And what we found out is that Zillow leads that have been, they were at least two years old, 25% of the leads that we contacted had bought a house. And so, you know, when agents say leads suck, 25% of the ones we, we talked to had already bought a house. Um, so if you can extrapolate that over all the leads, then it, you would say 25% of all Zillow leads have already bought a house. And we're finding that holds true with a lot of the older leads that, that you didn't get a hold of. And 
with the AI, we're seeing it even more that, oh, I just bought, I just bought, we already bought. These leads are good leads. We're just not there when they're ready for us to be there. We're not doing our job of reaching out to them and meeting them and nurturing them through to the sale. Hey, Damon, is that, is that like, is, more, is that more of a process thing, a training thing, like where uh, a personality thing, like are they, are they worried, are they overwhelmed? What, what happens there, what causes that? That was a great big yes answer. Um, I, think, I think it's all of those. Um, one, you, you, if you're an individual, you gotta train yourself. Um, if you're on a team, hopefully the team's training you, hope you're taking it upon yourself to learn. But when a lead comes in, and everybody thinks because we have these great CRMs and um, not a plug for PowerPoint, but it doesn't matter if it's PowerPoint, Boomtown, it doesn't matter who it is, the CRM doesn't do it for you. You still have to do your part. And so when a lead comes in, everybody thinks because it's in their CRM that it's just going to sit there and it, and it belongs to them and nobody else is working it. But that lead that logged in on one place, they logged in on seven or eight different places. And so everyone's trying to contact them. So first thing is, Speed to lead, you you got to be on the phone with them in 10, 15, 20 seconds. You know, the, the old lead, the lead study that says within five minutes, people think within five minutes means five minutes, you know, <laughs> but it's <laughs> – Definitely doesn't. No, that five minutes really is, should be 20 seconds, 30 seconds. I worry so much about – call forwarding, like we use dialogue tech. I worry sometimes about how long that phone takes to transfer numbers because the consumer isn't waiting anymore. You know, Nick, how long have you been in the business now? I've been in the business 12 years, you know, and you're totally right. The consumer is not waiting any, anymore because think about it this way. You got a, you got a lead coming in from realtor.com or Zillow or homes.com or any of the consumer portals. With Facebook, it might be a little bit different, or pay-per-click, it might be a little bit different. But with the consumer portals, if you're not responding to them in less than a minute, I mean, if they've requested to see a home that, and that lead went to you, they've requested to see other homes, right? So it's so important, you know, like a lot of agents say, oh, I've got five minutes. You have literally five seconds. That's why I say, if you can do it in under a minute, or have the leverage to do it under a minute or have the automation in place to do it under a minute. And by the way, these days automation is not expensive. I mean, if you use something like agent legend, which is 200 bucks a month, you know, yes, to some people that might seem like a lot, but that 200 can make you 2000 really just by responding so fast. Yeah. And I'm curious too, guys, like you, uh, you're talking about the, the speed to lead. Do you, uh, I see these stats that are floating around the industry, you know, 70, 75%, sometimes higher of, uh, of people who are wanting to buy a home or whatever. They go with the first agent they hear from. I mean, do you guys find 70, that to be true as well? It's like 72%. Woo. So that speed to lead becomes that much more important. Well, so that's why, so it, it's funny because I was at a conference the other day and you have so many people, I don't know where this came from. I guess real estate agents are inherently lazy that we only want to deal with someone that's pre-qualified that preferably is sitting in front of the house, has their checkbook in hand and is ready to close in 30 days. But you know, everybody wants to deal with pre-qualified client. And so the, the, the seems to be the, the, and the question everybody asks on the phone is, are you pre-qualified? They put all these roadblocks in the way. It's like we try to disqualify a lead instead of trying to qualify a lead. And, mm -hmm. To, to what you're saying, Jacob, what we do on our team is we want to meet them. We want to meet them. So answer the phone, get them on the phone, and go meet them. Go, find, go meet these people. Get face-to-face. -face. Until you're face-to-face, -face, you have nothing. I don't care how much you text them, how much you call them, how much you do anything. You've got to get face-to-face -face and meet them to see what you have because you're not even interviewing for the job until you're face-to-face, -face, you know? And so, you know, call them, get them on the phone, send them a text, um, if we can't get them on the phone, we send them a bomb bomb video. It's it's not meeting them, but it's it's the next best thing. At least they're putting a face with a name. You know, I don't want to be Geico. You know, I love that you said that because you're so right. I feel like so many agents, they are trying to disqualify a lead as opposed to qualify. Someone says to me, that, so if I get a lead and they say they're pre-approved or they say they're not, they get the same exact treatment. Right. So I will definitely have a meeting with somebody who's not pre-approved, but wants to buy a home 
because I'm not going to completely disregard that person, right? I mean, don't ever judge a book. That person could afford, some, like in my, you know, in my one of my markets in New Jersey, you know, uh, one th they could easily be a million dollar buyer. They just haven't had, haven't had, haven't bothered to get a pre approval yet. And so many of us are like, forget it, forget it, forget it. And one of the things I love about Y Lopo leads and with Firepoint working with Y Lopo is that a lot of those leads are really at the beginning stages. They need the education, and the great thing about them is. It's so much easier to build a relationship with a buyer who needs the education because then that's where you come in as the expert to guide them through the entire process. I always tell buyers, you don't need to only call an agent when you're ready to make an offer. There's a lot more that goes into it and we can help you from, you know, even further on before that. Well, and to your point, that's exactly when somebody says I'm not looking to buy for a year. Case in point, I have an agent on my team last year. We do call coffee dates, okay? And I have a whole powerful point around it. If anybody wants it, let me know. I'll send it to you because a coffee date's not a date, okay? It's a coffee date. But we had an agent last year who did a ton of coffee dates, and a lot of the team was kind of laughing, oh, you're, losing, you're wasting your time, you're not doing anything. Well, this year, guess who my number one agent is, okay? All those coffee dates are turning into checks this year. They weren't ready. So she's like, I understand. Let's just meet. You get to know me. I'll get to know you. I'll find out what you're looking for. And when you're ready, I'll be here. Now, all of those people are turning into checks this year because she made the investment last year. It just makes sense. Uh, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. So um, in the beginning of the, in the, beginning of the uh, webinar, you had mentioned your team structure. So I want to just go back to that for a sec because I got to ask you a question. What's your structure look like again for everybody who's jumping on a little bit late? Uh, we've got – we got 14 agents official now, onboarding 16 this coming week. Um, we've always had the listing side, the buy side. It's morphing a little bit now until the agents that are qualified can do both. Um, we do floor duty, which, you know, that's something from the early 2000s that most people have gone away from, but I still, I still hold fast to it. It just works. It works because somebody's responsible. So the floor duty, is it someone who's answering the phones? Do you get walk-ins? Are you like at a storefront or a little bit of both? It's everything. So when they're on duty, we call it, it's their time to fill their pipeline. So when they're on duty, they get all the internet leads, they get walk-ins, they get phone calls. So that's their time that they can fill their pipeline. That's when they get their leads for the month. Now their internet leads are only protected for a minute. Okay. So, um, yeah, how's that look? You do a round robin or you like a, do a first to, to claim type of thing? Ish. So Firepoint has ponds, okay? Right. And thank God there's unlimited ponds because I probably abuse that much to Firepoint chagrin. <laughs> um, I can tell you this G with Wailopa was not happy about my ponds, but we, we figured it out. Um, so we have ponds. So I have a duty pond. So all the leads from duty go in duty pond. And so nobody can touch that lead for 60 seconds. Okay, except for the duty agent. After 60 seconds, free game. And then that that lead stays in that pond for three days. So every duty agent, I have two shifts a day, every duty agent calls that lead twice. Okay. And so first day is four times, second day four times, third day four times, then it moves over to a shark tank. And it stays in the shark tank to, forever, you know, and, and until they, they buy, die, or say, leave me the hell alone. You know? And Damon, do you, do you, uh, uh, like uh, lay on uh, automation on that too, like with uh, emails or texts or anything? We don't do emails. We do do texts. Um, we drip texts on them. We don't drip emails on them. I've, I just, in my experience, emails are those unsubscribe things. Right. You know? um, now we do, every single person um, is set up on a property search, like immediately. We don't let the, the system will set one up after I think six hours, but my agent's responsible for setting them up. And so how I do it is my duty agent sets up the search. We make sure there's 200 search results. We want 200 search results so that they're constantly every week getting properties mm -hmm. because people want to see houses. They don't want to talk to agents. They want to talk to an agent. They probably would have called one. Um, <laughs> we see the properties, okay. And then as that lead moves through the ponds, it stays assigned. That search stays assigned from that first agent. So a lot of, the sales we get are people just bubble up, you know, six months down the road, they say, Hey, can I take a look at the house you sent? 
Well, that agent's rewarded for their work they did in the very beginning because that search is still coming from them. Got it. Okay, I got you. That makes sense. That makes sense. Makes sense? Yeah. So but this, anybody can convert it in that time frame if they call it and reach them. So in other words, agent effort, they make a dial, they make a text, they get a response. Anybody can claim it. If the, if the contact surfaces on its own, we call it popping up. If they pop up, the initial agent gets the lead. Got it. Okay, great, great. So somebody wants to know, all right, 20 to 30 seconds, right? Does that have to be a phone call? Does a personal text count? You know, what does that look like uh, for your agents? So if they, if it's, if they just text and don't call, they probably won't be working here anymore. <laughs> well, okay. Let's say, let's say they're going to call, right? But could they do a text after 20 or 30 seconds for a first touch? Or that always has to be that initial phone call? Call, call, text. So two calls in a row. So the call, call is the call. They don't pick up, hang up, dial again. Dial again. Because that's what Gabe says too. Yep. Call a second time. Yep. No one answers, then send the text message. It's in the text. Wait minute, 30 seconds, then send a bomb bomb. A bomb bomb email text. Bomb, like bomb, bomb, bomb video text. Bomb bomb video text. Yes. Got it. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. All right. So um, now someone wants you to explain nurturing, right? Like once you reach a lead, once you reach a buyer who says, I'm nine months out. What is, what is that? What does that look like? What's your, what's your system in place for that? So pretty much anything they tell you, I cut in half. So they tell me nine months, I'm probably going to do four months. If they tell me a year, I'll probably do six months because once they have an itch, they tend to scratch it. They tend to do something about it. I, I, I also feel like if someone says they're ready to, they, they're not going to be ready for three months or, or six months, they're probably able to buy in three. Correct. Yeah. And yeah. so anything they say we cut in half and then you start adjusting from that but a nurture. So our expectation on any agent is anytime we talk to a consumer, consumer sphere, past client, you set the expectation of the next time you're going to talk to them. And in FirePoint, I guess all CRM, so I don't know, but in FirePoint, I can go into my, my task list. I can set a date, then I can put it on my Google calendar. Okay. So I put it right on my Google calendar. It's right there. I know when I have to call them back and then I can put in a note of what I'm going to talk to them about or why I'm calling them back. And so every time we talk with someone, we set the expectation of the next time we're going to talk to them. Got it. That makes perfect sense. Okay. And so someone was asking, what's it look like when you set that coffee date? You know, what do you talk about during that coffee date? Um, I mean, it's, it's just like, it's just like a, a phone call when you're qualifying. You're talking about, I mean, Ford, you know, the family, what they're doing for work, what do they do um, for recreation and everything what they're looking for, where they're going to move, what are the motivations going to be. It's, it's really weird. And I'm not being a smart ass when I say this, Nick, but it's, um, have a conversation, you know, what have a conversation. Um, well, like everybody talking, wants a like secret to people and stuff. Everybody wants a secret script and the secret script is this, have a freaking conversation, treat them like people. Cause I'm pretty sure most of them are people. You know what I like to say, Damon leads are people too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> everybody, but don't, doesn't everybody want a secret script of what should I say? They're talk, talk to them. It's very, very strange to me because you can call your mom or dad or your friends and have a conversation, right? But you just can't call a random stranger and have a conversation. It's in fact, in my opinion, I find it easier to talk to random strangers because I don't know anything about them. Right. Everything's a discovery. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so I could ask any, what's your favorite color? I could ask them. You know what I mean? I don't know anything about them. The possibilities are endless. Yeah. So true. So true. Jacob, I feel like you're left out, buddy. Chime hey, in. Please. All right. I'm, I'm going to jump in here because I'm, <laughs> I'm curious. Uh, you guys have been talking a lot about, you know, more from the agent perspective. I mean, from a team lead perspective, Damon or Nick, I mean, um, you know, you guys obviously uh, have to hold people accountable, all that. I mean, Damon, how do you, what's your kind of process of, of making sure that's happening? Well, it's kind of an easy question because you got the accountability dashboard. But so, I mean, we use the accountability dashboard and then I actually have a layer on top of that where I have a virtual in the Philippines that at four o'clock every morning takes my accountability dashboard, breaks it down for me and emails it to me. So that to me, it's a report. I just look at the report. It comes from Firepoint, but it's a report of everything that happened the day before. So that if an agent didn't make phone calls, didn't do the emails, didn't do the texts, 
I know that first thing going in. So our first huddle, I could address it, you know, and it's the whole thing of inspect what you expect. I mean, if, if someone, if you expect someone to do it, you need to check and make sure they are doing it. If they're not doing it, you need to address it. And yeah. luckily for us, Firepoint does have a very good accountability dashboard where you can drill to pretty much anything you want. That is very true. And, you know, it's interesting because accountability is very uncomfortable. And I have learned the hard way over the years that if you're not uncomfortable, you're not growing. If you're not letting people make and, – and by the way, accountability isn't micromanaging. And someone, someone's not trying to micromanage you. You have said, here's my goals, and now there's someone whose job it is to make sure you reach them and to make sure you're doing what needs to get done every day. Um, and that's what accountability is. When you have to report to somebody, you're going to want to give them your results and you're going to want them to be good. Right? So don't, if we wouldn't have coaches, or we wouldn't have team leaders if everyone could hold themselves accountable. So here's the fun thing, the funny thing about what you just said, Nick. Okay. So no one wants to be micromanaged, right? Right. No one really wants to be held accountable. But as soon as they don't make the income they need to make, whose fault was it? Oh, it's our fault. Well, and of course it is. <laughs> because you didn't tell me I needed to do this. You know? Oh, I can't tell you how many times I'm blamed. I didn't succeed because of you. Right. I mean, or they go home and their wife's like, why, did, why, why don't we have money to pay the mortgage this month? And it's Nick didn't make me call my leads. You know? <laughs> So, I mean, it's, it's, it's one of those things of, no, it, it, yeah, we have to hold people accountable. I mean, it's especially as much money as you and me and everyone else is paying for these leads, paying for these programs. You know, I had somebody the other day say, well, if you add somebody to your team, it doesn't cost you anything, does it? And I actually did the cost. And just, I mean, Google email costs $10 a month per seat. You know, a seat on FirePoint is, what, $60, Jacob, for extra seats? Right. There's a cost to doing business. You know, insurance, you pay for each agent you have. I mean, there's a cost to sitting there. And our, we have to be accountable to ourselves, and we have to hold agents accountable for that money. Totally agree. Totally agree. Um, so, actually, yeah. uh, real quick, sorry, Nick, uh, just to jump in on the accountability thing. Because, uh, Damien, you mentioned the reports. You're, I, I I take it you're looking at numbers, right? Kind of the activity. What if the activity's there? I mean, obviously we've got the call recording and all that. Um, if the activity's there, but the sales aren't coming through, is that is that where it becomes a coaching opportunity and you're going in and listening to the recorded calls, or, or how do you use those if you if you do? We tend to listen. We tend to listen to more than we listen to both calls. We listen agents that are converting well. We listen to those calls because what are they saying that's getting the conversion? Agents that aren't converting well, we listen to those calls, find out what they're saying that's not getting the conversion. And usually it's little tweaks like, man, Gabe and I, we were in a seminar yesterday, and one of my agents, first call he pulls up, two rules they broke was, um, is this blank? A, they know you don't know them, so why you ask? I mean, they automatically disengage to know your salesperson. And then they ask, how are you doing? You don't know them. You don't care how they're doing, you know? And so it's, it's one of those things. Yeah. We listen to them all the time. Like every day we listen to calls and what we'll do, we use Slack. We'll, we'll send out good calls. We'll send out bad calls. Nice. We'll say, Hey guys, you can do this and you can't do this. And it's not micromanaging. It's not to embarrass. We have a very open uh, team and we hold each other accountable. And it's, it's a lot of it's peer pressure. You can't do this. You can do that. I love that you said, first of all, I totally agree with you. I don't ever ask anyone on the phone that I've never spoken to how they're doing because it's an opportunity for them to hang up. First mm -hmm. of all, you want to get right to the point. Hey, Damon, how you doing? It's Nick Baldwin with Keller Williams. I want to give you a ring because you're looking at some houses on my website in Farmington Hills. Is that the only area you're interested in or can I help you find a house in another area that's nearby? Just get right to the point. Yep. Most people don't want their time wasted. <laughs> You know, no, like they don't want to have small talk with someone they don't know. How you doing? Click or how you doing? Oh man, you know what I mean. Well, I was great until you called. Um, 
that's essentially i just i hate asking people how they're doing i think it's a waste of time and i think they don't it's insincere you know you're calling for a specific purpose they were on your website you know get right to the point after the second phone call you know then you can start having that little uh you know that one-on-one uh rapport you know right well and the other thing is if the lead's name is nick baldwin don't say is this nick well hey so that's actually something i'm glad you brought that up right uh I hear a lot of agents actually thinking that's a great tactic, right? Especially through text. If someone can't get a hold, they can't get a hold of someone on the phone, sending a text, first name, question mark, right? right I so don't know. How do you feel about that? Like, Damon, I've called you numerous times. Uh, I, I, I can't get a hold of you. Uh, and then I send you a text that says, Damon? So two different things. Okay. <laughs> So you're right, but two different things. On a text, we we do is this Nick all the time, right? We'll do is this Nick, you know, and usually it's yeah, who's this? Okay, now the name's right, so I can put a little mark in my CRM. Name is correct. Okay, we're we're good. Uh, but on the phone, if I say is this Nick, you know I don't know you because if I knew you, I'd know your phone number. That's true. You're right. It makes sense. You got your guard up now, and you're like, okay, the, like when somebody calls me and says Damien, well, my name's Damon. Okay. So if you know me, you didn't call me Damien. Okay. And so I know you're a salesperson and now I don't like you. That's so funny. <laughs> well, first of all, you don't like him for two reasons. The salesperson is second. He didn't, he didn't even bother to, to read your name, right? Correct. Correct. But on the text we do, is this Nick all the time? I mean, like, like hundreds a week. Is this Nick? Is this Mary? Is this, we do that all the time. So let's go back to accountability. How are you, other than using the FirePoint account- accountability tractor, a tracker, you have a big team. How are you holding them accountable every day? You have in team meetings, you have an accountability phone calls. You know, what are you doing specifically? So we're probably a little different than most in that um, we do prospecting every day, three hours a day in the Hold office. Hold on, stop it. Really? Hold yeah. on. You're, you're, you're doing prospecting. I don't even... That's cool. just a whole, that's a novel idea. Core value number one, we're a prospecting based company. Okay, got it. Okay, that's core value number one. Um, so we prospect three hours a day every day. And eight o'clock, we're here, we do a huddle, and the huddle is positive focus five minutes. And really all it is, is I want everybody, I want everybody to show up. I want to make sure everybody's here, okay? And then we, it, and our prospecting is different than most. We, we call for an hour. Then we do social media for half an hour. Okay. All right. Then we do uh, texting. Hold on, hold on. Back up for a sec. When you say you do social media for half an hour, what's that look like? So what we do is we play with Facebook algorithms. Um, so we go and we, we friend five people that we aren't friends with. And we go and comment usually on 10 people that are not on our news feeds we go find 10 people that don't show on our news feed oh. on their posts. And then we go like 10 people that aren't on our news feeds post people in your news feed are there because you interact with them. Mm-hmm. But guess what? They're not seeing your crap either. You're not seeing their crap. They're not seeing your crap. Okay. Sure. Sure. You want them to see your crap stuff, advertising BS. <laughs> you gotta be on their news feed. The only way you can get on the news feed is one, you can pay for it and sponsor it or two, you can interact with them. And if you interact with them, that's free. So uh, one of my good friends, her name is Lisa Archer. I'm not sure if you know her. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. So Lisa has a similar strategy. It's the five 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 rule. Five five. Yeah. I stole it from her. And I oh, am- except you increased it. You am- am- oh, am- so them's fighting words. <laughs> <laughs> them's fighting words, Lisa. He put it on steroids. <laughs> I answered up one. But I will tell people, don't go friend request twenty people. You start doing 20 a day and Facebook will catch you doing it. And Facebook, oh. doesn't like it. yeah. So five to 10 a day, you can add any more than that. Facebook doesn't like it. Damon, do you limit that only to Facebook or are you going to some of the other networks? Um, so my, I do Facebook. That's where I work. Um, I've got people to do Instagram. I'm still trying to figure out Instagram. I don't understand why I can't just go to the next thing without having to back out. I don't like that. Um, <laughs> But my Instagram people do Instagram, and that's pretty much what we do. Video stuff, we do YouTube, Instagram, Instagram, IGTV, Mm -hmm. um, Facebook, Twitter, which I hate Twitter. 
but we do Twitter and then LinkedIn, which I don't understand the purpose of LinkedIn either, but we do it. Lisa just chimed in. She said, we do 75 touches a day. I love what you're saying, Damon. Cool. Thank you. So, we rip off the best. <laughs> so, 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 so for people that don't know, it's, it's very easy to make touches on social media. You know, you're, 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 you're commenting um, on a certain amount of people's posts a day. You're liking a certain amount. You're friending a certain amount. You're instant messaging a certain amount. And that can add up. Like Lisa's doing 75 touches a day on social. That can really add up. And, you know, believe it or not, this is, this is where we are right now. And if, if, if you say something to somebody that's, that's interesting enough, they will click through to your profile. If your profile is public, they will see you're a realtor. So I'll give you an example. I, I participate a lot in, uh, in neighborhood groups, right, in the areas that I live in. I currently live in Michigan, but I'm from New Jersey, and I still have agents in New Jersey, so I still participate in groups there in New Jersey. We recently just got a listing. It just went live over earlier last week. We got 18 offers, which is nuts. New Jersey blowing up. But I got the listing because he's been watching me in the local groups and he likes what I have to say about real estate. And that's why he called me to list his house. That's happened numerous times over the course of the last 12 months. Really important. Don't, don't look at social media like a waste of time. Make it part of your business model and be strategic about it. So hey guys, I'm actually curious, do you guys mix it up with, you know, kind of, you know, obviously real estate related comments, you know, reactions, things like that. And even just, you know, like, Oh, Hey, that was a great picture. Or I love that re restaurant, you know, that you talked about, do you guys mix it up or keep it just business? Oh no, my, I'm, a, I'm like, <laughs> I, I'm like the 80, 20 rule on my personal page. 80%. I try at least 80% personal, 20% business. So to, I got two points I want to make. I don't want to forget, but I'll go to yours first. So um, when I'm commenting, it's all personal. When I'm commenting and liking, it's all personal. Okay. When I post stuff, it's probably, I share a lot of my wife's crap, which is all kids. So that's easy. So it's probably three <laughs> or four kids and one or two business, something like that. Yeah. So I'm probably 60 to 70% personal. Um, I have a hard time posting personal. It's just not me. Mm -hmm. But I can share her stuff, which makes it easy. But one thing I wanted to point out, Nick, because you brought up, for God's sake, agents, one, you're in the real estate business, having a personal profile that's locked down, it's just stupid. Right. Don't be a secret agent. Yeah, you're a secret agent. And then the second thing is, put your freaking town on there. There's so many agents. I go through lab code agents. I click on somebody. I don't know where the hell they're from. I'm certainly not going to scroll down through their news feed to figure out where they're from, you know, but they don't even put on their profile where they are, or what market they serve. It is the most crazy thing I've ever seen. Agents, they don't understand how to use social media, you know, Which is good for us. And it is good for us. And by the way, Maybe it was Lisa who's, you know what? I'll just give Lisa credit, right? Because I'll just leave, give Lisa credit. It's social media, not selling media. Right. right. So it's okay to share business, but whenever I share business, I, I try to make it, I try to make it as personal as I can, you know? Um, but when you're sharing business, try to make it relatable too. Um, you know, if you're sharing a new listing, you know, make it relatable, give some fun information about it and so on and so forth. Be, 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 be creative with it. It's, it's your opportunity to, uh, you know, to just be creative with something that would otherwise, because nobody cares about your new listing. Nobody cares about your open house, but if you do it in a fun way, then they will. It's, it's funny. If you do a video about it, people will watch it. If you post it, it annoys them. You know, it's, it's just, it's, it's kind of weird. But people like video. That's what they go there for is video. Yeah. So when you post videos, they really don't get upset or bothered by it. But if you just do just new listing, new listing, new listing, new listing, that's how you get the unfollow button. Oh, for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, so uh, most of your business is from Wailopo, Zillow Realtor, pay-per-click, so on and so forth, that, kind of, that, that type of stuff. Yeah. Or do you do um, expired Spizbo's sphere of influence? We do a little bit of sphere of influence. Um, not near, nearly as good as we should. 
um, and we play in the expired FISBO, we don't do a ton of it. Now, okay. most of my listing business is radio TV. Oh, really? Yeah, radio oh, wow. TV is right. where I've made my, I mean, radio TV is where I've made my money or what's made my, my mark on this market for the last, I don't know, seven, eight years. So I can give a, I, there's something I like to do with social media to bring it offline a little bit. If anyone is, wants to hear about how I do some of my sphere of influence, Facebook is like the window into people's lives. Right. And what I like to do is I scroll through my newsfeed and if you're going to, and I like to send handwritten cards to people. Right. But don't send people handwritten cards when you see they had a baby or when you see they got married those are milestones that everyone notices. Send them a handwritten card when something they post would most likely not get a card in the mail. You know what I mean? Um, so here's an example. I sent a handwritten card to one of my past clients as she moved to California, right? So I'm never going to buy or sell another house with her, but she's been a really loyal client with referrals. And when she moved to California, she planted her new garden, right? And she had all these beautiful flowers and she posted pictures about them and talked about how how proud she was. So I sent her a card telling her how beautiful her, her new flowers in her, Cal, in her new California backyard was. And guess what she did? She wrote me a handwritten card back mm. and was so honored that I noticed because in the grand scheme of things, it's not important, right? So that's just a little trick on how to get people to notice that you're noticing little things in their life. Um, so uh, Jacob, I feel like we're just having a conversation without you, buddy. No, man, I'm, I'm why, right here with you. Why don't we do this, right? So this is a web. Uh, so this is a webinar. It's a FirePoint webinar. Uh, we both use FirePoint. Let's talk about some of the some of the features that FirePoint has that can help people respond quickly and keep team leaders and their agents accountable. Yeah, I mean, uh, Damon, I I love getting into. <laughs> The real life uh, examples, you know, with with you guys, and I'm curious, uh, you know, if you can walk through like how you guys use uh, lead distribution. Obviously, you're using ponds. You you mentioned those, but um, you know, you you had mentioned bomb bomb there at the beginning of this webinar. Um, mm -hmm. Like, how do you start mixing all those things together with speed to lead or lead distribution, bomb bomb videos? Uh, you know, are you doing a mix of those? Yeah. So first and foremost, in our on our team, um, one of our just main rules. If it didn't happen in FirePoint, it didn't happen, which means you don't text, you don't call, you don't email, nothing happens outside of FirePoint. Um, and it's really never been an issue. Nobody's ever fought back because that's just the way it is. So everything happens in FirePoint. There are no calls and it's great because everything's recorded and multiple times throughout the years, I've downloaded conversation forward and it kind of ends any disputes that may or may not have arisen. Um, <laughs> But when, when a lead comes in, um, we use the lead distribution rules. Everything goes to the pond, uh, to, the, to the duty pond. Everything goes there. And duty, pond, duty agent has it for a minute free and clear. After that, it goes, anybody can claim it. Um, to claim it for us, you have to have a conversation. You have to have a conversation, then you can claim it. It can't be that, ooh, that's a good lead. I want it. Okay, so you have to, be, you have to, you can't just take it. You got to get in touch with them first. Yep, you got to take. And so we have a lead manager. He's in the Philippines also. He actually crawls all of our leads, not all of our leads, crawls about 900 a day, the last 900 that came in, and make sure that everyone was worked the way it was supposed to be worked. Okay. Make, make sure that we don't miss any pop ups. Okay. So if somebody claims a lead but they didn't talk to him, he'll just throw it back in the pond. Okay. So we really don't have any abusers because if you abuse it, it only lasts 24 hours till you're caught and it goes back. Um, but we call, call, text, bomb, bomb. So the first agent that gets it, call, call, text, wait another minute, bomb, bomb, send a bomb, bomb. It's normally how it happens hundred percent. Some of my ladies like, Oh, I didn't do my hair. So we still have those issues. Um, cause I don't look good. And I try to tell them nobody. Oh, you mean for a video? Oh yeah. Oh, I gotcha. Yeah. And I'm like, nobody cares what you look like, but they do. Anyway. So we call, call, text, bomb, bomb. Then the next agents to come on, they call, 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 call. We never leave a message. And we never leave a message because once you leave a message, you're kind of an ass if you call them again. I mean, you left a message. You right. told them what you wanted, so why are you calling them again? You know, and I don't know about y'all, but I don't check voicemail. Like, I have email, I'll read it. 
but I don't check voicemail. It's just one of those things that annoys me. I'm like, oh my gosh, you actually left a message. Now I got to check, you know, because if I wanted to talk to you, I'd call you back. You know, I mean, it's, it's like a prompt. You called me, I'll call you back when I can. Um, after three days, it goes into the shark tank and the shark tank is where it sits. It has a search going out from, it has a search going out from the original agent it was signed to. And, uh, and you know the rules better than I do. I know we worked on them and tweaked them, but Firepoint, and everybody probably should know this, and if your CRM doesn't do it, you need to know it. Um, Google, Yahoo, MSN, all those, they don't like spam. And so if you have a bunch of unread emails coming from somebody, they don't like it. And so um, I heard that one CRM recently changed after seven days. If it hasn't been open, they no longer send emails, which is just crazy oh, to me. Wow. Okay, so if you're sending listing alerts <laughs> to an email address and those people are not opening those listing alerts, it's going to go to spam. Uh, it could. So what Firepoint's done, and so what Firepoint's done, help me out, Jacob, I, if they don't read them for 30 days, it goes to once a week, right? I, I believe so. And you can, you can also choose, you know, if it's coming from a user or a company, uh, you can switch that up. So, um, yeah, but I think, I think you're right on the timing there. Yeah, 30 days, it goes to once a week. Then I think it's 90 days that they have an open one then, it goes to once a month. And the reason is what they don't want is like I have 20 or 36,000 leads. Well, if I'm sending in 36,000 searches and 30 of them aren't being open, what's going to happen is they're going to see my URL and they're just going to ghost me. They just won't even deliver those because they think they're spam. Got it. Okay. And so it automatically throttles, but it never stops. It'll still send it out even at the worst once a month. And we've had people that four and five years later respond to an email from three years ago. You're like, <laughs> you know, and they're like, Hey, I want to see this house. I'm like, dude, that thing's been sold twice since then. But, <laughs> but what they did is it imprinted in their mind, you know, Damon Gutierrez associates, Damon Gutierrez, Damon Gutierrez. So they just did a search in their email. It popped up. And they sent an email. Yeah. yeah. And so that's, that's one of the things they did to help protect us. Um, hot buyers, we send immediately. They, they get alerts every 15 minutes, somebody hot. That's someone that we've met that's going to buy a house now, you know? Um, but we, I mean, it's anybody we talk to has to have a task set for the next time we're talking to them. And then we just keep them engaged. We, we don't do bulk texting. It scares me because I don't want to get sued. You know, right now everybody's getting sued for something. So we don't do bulk texting, but we do drip text. So we put text in there and we drip on them. Right. Um, because agents kind of suck at follow up. <laughs> yeah, they do. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Speaking of emails, right? Speaking of, uh, <clears throat> speaking of email uh, listing alerts. Um, and I can talk about this because, you know, the Y Lopo and Firepoint partnership, something interesting that we found out, uh, about, about, um, about the open rate versus, versus retargeting rate. Right. So we're only seeing over the last six months, I think only 200 or so listing alert emails have been opened that we've been sending out. But on the same token, over the last six months, 4,000 people have come back to our website through retargeting mm. that's over five that's over 500 people a month getting their listing alert feeds in getting a listing alerts in their email in their facebook newsfeed through dynamic real estate ads so it's super interesting to me email listing alerts i think are dead if you if you're not familiar with retargeting with um real estate ads for real estate i'm sorry <laughs> dynamic ads for real estate which is dare if you're not familiar with that, get familiar with it because the new listing alert is in the Facebook newsfeed. And what's so cool about it is that every time they see an ad, it's different because it reflects their latest search. So they're always seeing homes that they love. And I compare it to, here's an example, like summertime's coming up. I go to homedepot.com. I look at Weber Grills. I don't end up buying one. I'm going to start seeing that same Weber Grill in my newsfeed for three months. But we're in an industry where our inventory changes every 15 minutes. So the ads they see are going to change every 15 minutes, and that's going to keep them coming back 
in your newsfeed and they're going to think, oh my gosh, Nick Baldwin is everywhere. This is a guy I want to work with. You know? Well, I, I look at it as legalized stalking. You know? <laughs> I mean, one, once you have their information, you can stalk them legally and professionally on social media so that you're there when they're ready. And that's, that's our problem as an industry is we're not there when they're ready. Yep. No, a hundred percent, hundred percent. So Damon, uh, you guys, like you guys are using uh, Y Lopo heavily and obviously the integration with Firepoint and everything as they are starting to get retargeted and have some more activity and everything. Um, are you guys looking at activity in Firepoint and then acting on that in any way? Like how do you, how do you start to use that and kind of a, uh, I don't know, almost like a second chance uh, speed to lead type of deal. So we, yeah, we, we only work out of Firepoint. Um, and I know some people probably work out of Wailopo also, but we only work out of Firepoint. Well, Wailopo doesn't have the CRM. They just have the marketing. Right. Info. So right. Wailopo connects to Firepoint and Firepoint to CRM. Right. Yeah. So um, it's, it's everything, like everything they looked at in Firepoint. Like I don't have to go. The only reason I ever go to Stars or to Wailopo is if I'm going to do a listing rocket. Uh, other than right. that, everything I do, I do over in Firepoint. So their activity, their text, the dynamic texting that's going back and forth with the AI, all those conversations, everything's in one news feed. So when I go and look at an activity feed in Firepoint, everything's there. When I want to know what they're looking for, it doesn't matter if they're looking in Wilopo or they're looking in Firepoint. It's all in Firepoint. So yeah. it, it's truly one, one stop. I'm not going to say shop, one stop working. It's one platform to work out of, which is, it's what agents want. I mean, agents don't want to, I got to go here to do this. And I go to here that they want to go one place to work. And it just works. It's just fluid. I mean, I will say this Firepoint and Y Lopa <laughs> knocked that integration out of the park. I mean, they really did. Like I'm beyond impressed with it. So yeah, it's, it's a lot of good stuff. No, go ahead, Jacob. I was just going to say, you know, like with that retargeting though, um, I mean, I appreciate the plug there, Damon. That was, that was awesome. But, uh, but I mean, you know, for those who are, who are, you know, kind of doing some of that retargeting and everything, I mean, what should they be looking for? Should they be saying, Hey, you know, someone, you know, uh, clicked once or, Hey, they, they've been starting to interact with these ads more and more. Like, how do you, how do you start to really uh, say, Hey, this person is, is truly re-engaged? So I can, you know, I can answer that first if you want. And then, yeah, please go for it. So like uh, here we're in a day and age where obviously there's some big brother going on out there more than people like to admit, right? Everybody knows that they're being watched in some way, shape or form. You just don't want to tell them, right? Like if someone looked at a property 74 times, you're not going to be like, Hey Damon, it's Nick from Keller Williams. I saw you looked at one, two, three, one, two, three main street 74 times. <laughs> just, uh, you know, when you'd like to see that. Um, that's not what we do. So if someone looks at a house 74 times in five minutes, what we're going to do is we'll give it a little bit and then we'll call and we'll say, Hey Damon, just wanted to follow up. Cause I saw this house at one, two, three main street. I think it might actually be perfect for you. Of course it is. He looked at it 74 times. <laughs> Damon's like, wow, this guy is like so in tune with what I'm looking for. Right. That's kind of the way you want to go about that. And, and, and you want to be on top of those opportunities and you get a lot of those opportunities when people are active on your site. Mm -hmm. So I can say what Nick said, but he just said it. So yeah. Okay. You can say it again. You can see it for me, just like you stole Lisa Archer. Yeah. Said. <laughs> I'll wait come on another webinar to say what Nick said. No, but that's, that's just it. You can't tell people, Oh, I saw you were looking at this because they're like, that's freaky. You know, you just have to have that intuition. Just like Nick said, Oh, I, what about this house? They're like, Holy crap. You know, we're thinking about the same thing. It's just, it just, it's how people's minds want to work. Nobody wants to know you're looking, even though they know you're looking, nobody wants to know you're looking. Exactly. You know, exactly. Just, you know, legalized stalking. <laughs> All right, awesome. Gabe. Well, Gabe's piping in. He said something. Who's, who's stealing what? He said he's been stealing. Oh, he said you've been stealing his stuff all day long. <laughs> well, I stole his place here because he's on an airplane. So let's be clear. <laughs> Gabe, that is no excuse, buddy. I missed your beautiful face. <laughs> um, anything you guys want to say in closing about accountability, about speed to lead, something that agents should really take into account, you know, when they're working with internet leads and they're blaming everybody else but themselves? I I'll just say this. Um, I truly believe, I truly, truly believe that 25% of all leads will buy a house. 
Um, I truly, truly believe that. If you're not there, they're not buying from you, okay? And there's a statistic that um, Polish has, and I think it's just industry, I think it's just worldwide on internet leads, and that's that 50% of all leads are trash, okay? And of the 50% that aren't trash, um, 7% buy in the first 90 days. And I think that's what we fight over as an industry is, you know, these are the people all of us are fighting over to try to convert today. And so that's why you see the one and two and 3% conversions because you've got multiple teams fighting over the same 7%. And I don't think anyone whatsoever competes for the 43%, which is where the real money is. And I think that if you can use technology and Firepoint's great with dripping the properties, the accountability is great, Lopo integrating with it so that it's dynamic retargeting and staying in front of them, and then artificial intelligence that will respond to them even when your agents won't. Um, when you use those things together, I think you're going to start seeing teams that implement that and agents that implement that start to convert more than 43%. And look, the real money's in the 43, it's not in the seven. Yeah, I, I'd like to also add that, you know, some mind blowing statistics that Tristan and I talk about a lot in our presentations. I mentioned one before the average response time to an internet lead from an agent is 44 hours. So it's two days, 50% of online leads don't even get a single response. That's from multiple sources, right? 70 it's now 72% of people will work with the first agent that contacts them. And on average, it'll take you at least eight attempts to get someone on the phone. So the two things you got to remember there, Respond really fast, respond often, and get in front of that person. Because if you do, you're more than 50% likely to work with them. Yeah, and that's why I think Damon, well, that's why I think Damon, who cares if they've been pre-approved or not, get in front of them. Get in front of them. You can't sell them if you can't meet them. Exactly. And I just, I'd add on what you guys have been saying all along, right? Um, mix it up. Make sure you are getting that live contact, but don't be afraid to use, you know, some of that automation to help out. Um, but don't also lean on it too much, right? Don't make it your crutch. So, um, yeah, I, I think there's awesome, awesome wisdom in all that. And those stats, Nick, are just, I mean, they're mind blowing, right? Yeah, I, mean, well, I, I would actually like to say, speaking of the automation, I love the Firepoint has some great automation and I created a, a drip campaign for uh, realtor.com leads that are more than 30 days old that haven't responded. And I just go in and I just click a button and I'm seeing so much engagement now and it's mind blowing to me how many of them still are not working with an agent mm -hmm. because no one's reaching out to them, but you, I mean, that's really what it comes down to. Yeah. So. Well, do you have, do you have two seconds, Nick, to go? Into yeah, I got two seconds. <clears throat> so people talk about Facebook leads suck. You hear that all the time and people got to realize that a Facebook lead, they didn't get on Facebook looking for houses. They got on Facebook to interact with other people and an ad popped up that they then clicked on. That is a much longer, much longer nurture than someone that went on realtor.com and said, Hey Nick, can I see this house? You know, but we want to act like they should be the same. You know, one of them expressed an interest, one of them expressed a desire, two totally different things. Completely. They got to be treated differently. You know, and I think that agents that want to down a lead source because it didn't convert into dollars this week, they got to look at what that lead source is. And if that lead source is a, a pay-per-click, at least they did a search for something. But on a Facebook lead, they, they had no, they were on Facebook looking at babies and an ad popped up and they clicked on it. And so you really got to look at the lead source and I'm going to steal this from Gabe. Hopefully he's watching. He calls it the journey of the lead. But you really got to look at the journey of the lead. How did that lead come in? And what was their intent when they came in? Then serve them. Give them what they wanted, which was what? Just give them what they want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Gabe said you'll lose more deals from not – well, Gabe said big shocker that you stole it from him. He also said <laughs> – he said he has a closing comment. You'll lose more deals from not following up enough than you will ever lose by following up too much. So here's the thing. Not following up enough, you're not going to get the business. Following up too much, they're going to tell you. So now you got, now you know where you need to be at. I'd rather someone tell me I followed up too much and have me say, you know what? That's a compliment because I pride myself on that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, because chances are no one else is doing it. 
And then you just dial it down from like a 10 to an eight. And then, you know, then you'll be good. Well, the yeah. number one complaint about the real estate industry is not too much follow-up. And by the way, he also said, it's, it, he said, it's their journey, not yours, not the journey of a lead. So Damon, next time you steal from Gabe, get it right. Just all, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, guys. Well, this has been a lot of fun. I appreciate your time. Uh, if you're interested in Firepoint, go to firepoint.net. And Jacob, thanks for, uh, thanks for coming in and, and doing this with us. And Damon, awesome to meet you. We've never talked before, but I'm glad I got to get to know you a little bit. And um, have a great day, guys. Yeah, and hey, Nick, real quick. Yeah. Real quick, uh, go to firepoint.net slash LCA. That way we know we're, you know, you're coming from LCA. Oh. We've got special discounts for, for you guys coming through through uh, the LCA network. So make sure you do that. And, um, and obviously, if you guys want to see more about lead distribution, come demo. We'd love to show you. Yeah, it's a gr honestly, guys, it's a great system. And it really has all the bells and whistles of some of those $2,000 a month platforms. It's really fantastic. I'm not just saying that. So firepoint.net slash LCA for all sorts of good deals. Thank y'all. Thanks guys. See you soon. Thanks guys. Thanks.